Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where and when you are watching this newscast. Welcome to a special, this is the year that it was. A roundup of the main news of 2015 regarding to cloud virtualization at EUC, coming to you from the virtualization practice. I am Tom Howarth. First thing I would like to do is to wish our readers, listeners and sponsors good luck and a happy and prosperous new year. Some of the main news were the items of 2015 included HP splitting into two separate companies, Cisco and EMC VMware divorcing over VCE, Symantec splitting into two separate companies, the launch of Windows 10, Pure Storage achieving IPO, NetApp filing for IPO, apologies for that, Nutanix filing for IPO, NetApp's buying Solidfire, Dell and EMC announcing their intention to merge, and 2015 was not the year of VDI Cloud or SDN. Okay, after 76 years, the end of October, saw HP, the company that swallowed up early IT giants DEC and Compaq, and later consulting giant EDS, split into two companies. Now there's no doubt that HP as a single entity was struggling. Some point to the purchase of Compaq as the start of its decline. Personally, I feel that acquisition was timely and well conducted. There is no argument the resultant HP ProLiant range for the whole rebadged Compaq servers were a much better go-to-market option than HP's on-grown devices. Others point to the tenure of Carly as part of the design, as start of the decline. Others, self-inflicted wounds such as the purchase of Palm and its subsequent file sale, or the 11 billion purchase of Autonomy and its subsequent 11 billion dollar write-down. But to me, it was the purchase of EDS in 2008 that marked the start of the end for this company as we knew it. HP paid 13 billion for the mega consultancy to bolster its position against IBM, another company that's facing many problems. But the issue with the purchase was that HP's technical servicing arm took on the culture and feel of EDS and not the other way around. EDS was a much bigger asset. As a result, the purchase did not generate anywhere near the amount of revenue expected and HP had again to announce an 8 billion mark write down on that asset. Other issues have included the almost farcical round robbing of CEO hires and fires and the volta face of the incoming CEO Whitman who stated that it would be a mistake to split up HP and that the business was better together only to reverse and split them. When the company split HP got cloud servers and software and services and HP Inc got the lower margin PC desktop and printer business. Time will tell if the two pieces can function better than HP did as a whole over the last decade. But I have several friends who are in both companies, so one can only hope so. 2015 also saw EMC and VMware divorcing partners Cisco. EMC got custody of, of the child VCE. It cost EMC $1, million in a, $1 billion in a divorce settlement, but I feel that is money well spent. VC was suffering because of the continuing infighting between Cisco and VMware over who, what and when software divine solutions was to be used, be it C ACI or NSX. Incidentally, Cisco won that argument within VCE. Cisco have retained a 10% share of the company but do not have any input into the day-to-day -day running of the company anymore. In fact, EMC have just effectively merged VCE, making it a division of EMC under a new pre president. Chad Sakash. Now it seems that Cisco may have come out worse here, but in reality they got a lot out of their six-year partnership. When the partnership was announced, EMC and VMware were looking for a compute element for their evol evolving idea of a software-defined data center, and the compute and storage and networks is a discrete element. They would not look at HP, Fujitsu or IBM, or ironically Dell, considering now the Dell EMC merger, but Cisco had just launched their new UCS platform and Cisco were looking to gain a foothold in a very tight market space. So VCE was a win-win for both parties. Cisco's UCS platform is now, according to Forrester, in 2014 was a solid number two in blade technology and closing in on a number three spot for total server sales. Not bad from a standing start. The VCE partner was in tech Sorry, the VC partnership was integral to that style of growth. But now that Cisco have achieved the run rate and are selling their UCS platform via the traditional and fully trained up resellers, 
VC Partner was no longer strategic from their point of view. Cracks started to appear when VMware brought Nicera in 2012 and they became a competitor to Cisco and Cisco responded by announcing a FlexPod, a partnership with NetApp and offering Hyper-V solutions based on their platforms over and above VMware. This caused stress fractures in their relationship with EMC directly. All in all, this is probably the best outcome for VCE, especially now that they have been subsumed within EMC proper as the EMC Converged Platform Division. October also saw the splitting of EMC into two companies. Symantec and Veritas, although it was not strictly a demerger, more of a sale, was sold to private equity investor Carlyle Group for $11 billion dollars which was effectively a markdown of $2.2 billion over their 2005 purchase price. This has effectively allowed Symantec to concentrate what is seen as their core functions, that of the security-based products, and allow, now allows Veritas to compensate on backups, archival and data management. In my post, I waxed lyrical on that this was a win-win for both companies. Symantec really did not know what to do with the Veritas acquisition, and Veritas was being starved of R&D dollars to do some much needed updates to their product. Now that they are separate, hopefully both companies can move forward successfully. In July, to great fanfare, Windows 10 was born. Well, to be fair, there was none of the razzmatazz of previous releases, no big name videos, etc. But all that said, they did seem to have been listening to their users and the start menu was back front and center for traditional desktops and notebooks. We still had tiles, but they were secondary on all devices other than tablets and mobiles, where their primacy made sense. In fact, one of the major new features was a service called Continuum that monitored the device and chose the most logical interface to use. For example, when using a Surface tablet, it was displayed as a tile interface, and when that device was attached to the keyboard, it would display as a start menu. Microsoft were also touting Windows 10 as the one ring to rule all devices, with it being <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. With the operating system primacy for that notebook and desktop environments for tablets, mobiles, and they also rewrote their Xbox game console system to use it. It also marked the death knell for the much lamented Internet Explorer with the introduction of a new browser called Edge. Now, not everything was rosy with Windows 10. There was some massive privacy.